Welcome everybody, Coach BK here. Video three on the Swim with Grace and Grit swimming series. This video three is on open water swimming. Kind of coming from the perspective of new to swimming, new to open water swimming, or struggling with swimming, okay? Um, so video one talked a lot about grace and developing grit that balance of the two, the dance of the two. Um, open water swimming, <laughs> we need to have um, a lot of grace for ourselves, a lot of grit, a, a huge sense of humor, um, and and a, kind of a big dash of stop belly aching and get it done, right? Um, if you balance those all out, you can make really good decisions. Um, like I said in video one, um, I've done two mass start swims, I've done a crazy Texas swim, handful of um, half Ironman swims, like um, anybody ever done, uh, it's not here anymore, but um, the Kansas 70.3. <laughs> My first half Ironman and first major triathlon was the Kansas 70.3 and my hand was so stormy and it was it's just situated such that the water's always chop, choppy like choppy um the DNF rate for that was over 26 percent that year <laughs> due to the swim holy smacks and at that point um, my heart condition that I had had been misdiagnosed as asthma so um, we were thinking on that day that I was the cutoff swimmer having a huge asthma attack and in reality uh, was completely an AFib at that point in time. However, um, there's where the sense of humor thing comes from. Um, and so having, you know, balancing all of this stuff to make good decisions because sometimes there comes a point in time where some people are going to need to decide to not do a swim. I had to do that at NOLA um, 2016. This water was just incredibly too rough. The, the swim support was not able to manage it. The buoys were everywhere. NOLA that year was a scene from the Titanic. It was really off the chain. Um, so balancing all of this stuff helps you to make really good decisions and be safe, really. So um, I'm going to try to give you a video on open water swimming, things to do specifically, and then the website in this, um, on this specific video is going to have some swim workouts and some links for drills that I'm going to reference. And then there's going to be some gym stuff specifically. So the website's going to be kind of um, a supplemental, give you some things to understand what I'm actually talking about. Okay. Um, preparing yourself for open water swimming and doing it with grace and grit, strength, calm and strong. It's a good experience. It's a tough experience, but it's a good experience. Um, Video two, we talked about kind of how to control fight or flight, the vagal tone, um, what to do when hormonally it's harder to control that fight or flight. And so we're, we're just going to talk about straight um, open water swimming just for a normal person that doesn't have a lot of issues, doesn't experience anxiety. Um, just know that if you have, you know, things with anxiety or fight or flight system or things that cause the swimming to be more difficult, watch this video a number of times and do more of it than not, okay? Um, this is from my experience of how to go from complete train wreck in swimming, <laughs> complete train wreck in swimming, to, to mass starts, Texas. I've scuba dived in the Galapagos and almost gotten a selfie with a shark. Chill. Okay. So these things that I'm going to talk about um, are things that I have helped heal the post-traumatic stress, get my mind right, and, um, you know, love on the chimp brain, but have the logical brain be stronger to control the fight or flight system, to control the vagal response, etc. Okay. 
First thing, pool, in the pool and in the gym. Gym work is so critical if you wanna swim straight. So if you wanna swim just the amount of yards that you need to, I mean, seriously. Um, if, you're if you have a stronger shoulder, you're not gonna swim straight. We swim crooked all the time in open water swimming because we have a stronger shoulder and we don't quite know it in the pool because you have the lane line that you can see and you're constantly sort of compensating and that's why we continue to be either right side dominant or left side dominant and we don't understand why we're not getting better in open water swimming and we rely on the wetsuit as our binky because we're not doing the gym work, we're not equalizing things out, we might not be slowing down enough to do the body balance work required to help you to swim straight. If you can swim straight, you sight less. If you swim straight, you're gonna swim less yards. If you're gonna swim straight, you're gonna feel better. Um, if you swim straight, you can catch a sight and you can start to understand your sight picture that you took and how you need to, while you're swimming, navigate with your face down and navigate, um, say like you saw a swimmer coming up, so you'll swim over to this way a little bit, keep swimming, and then you'll catch your sight picture again and you've chicked him, so you passed him, and then you're gonna keep, et cetera. You can do this in the gym. Beautiful, beautiful thing because your feet are on you and you can look in the mirror. So there's very specific gym work that you can do to not only keep this part of your shoulder quiet and happy, but keep them equally strong and learn where kinetically you're working. So when you do drills in the pool or you go out and do open water swimming, you're swimming straight. It's awesome. Okay, gym work. So I have a couple of favorite um, swim workouts and I'm gonna put one on the website one that's just a wash rinse repeat you can do it at home um, it's more on stability muscles um, because the truth of the matter is the swimming comes from the hips not super strong shoulders shoulders and especially with triathlon stuff we want to get out of the water feeling foxy not tired and that's why you get that swim picture right I always telling people, dudes, plan for your best swim picture ever, okay? I um, <laughs> I was doing um, Half Iron Man North Carolina fast swim because it's, swim it's a current assisted. Whoop, you want a fast swim, go to chat or go to North Carolina. It's a beautiful thing. I'm getting faster in swimming, so I found myself in some guy swimmers. And some dude, dudes don't breaststroke. Anyway, I <laughs> got kicked in the eye by a guy breaststroking. Um, and my immediate thought was, well, I've never had a swim exit picture um, with a black eye. And so I was like super pumped about maybe I would have a black eye. Um, and that would be pretty cool. It'd be an epic story. So anyway, um, <laughs> It's some, some mental training. Th this right here, getting out of the water and, and pulling yourself together mentally for that camera is all about um, mental attitude. Keeping a good mental attitude and not letting the things that go sideways pull you sideways. Mentally stay in the game. Best swim pictures ever. Okay. Um, so strength work in the gym is seriously important and if you can't get to, to the pool very often if you do strength work in the gym and you have decent form you will not lose pace doing certain strength work that you could do at home because it's lightweight stuff anyway there's some body balance drills total immersion is a beautiful thing and um, since I'm a yoga teacher too I kind of incorporate the two ideas there are some body balance drills that are in your face so if you can find drills to do that, if you're doing them on one side and you almost drowned and you're doing them on the other side and they're fine, that should tell you, again, you're not gonna swim straight in open water if both sides aren't equal. Okay, you'll constantly be compensating. You'll constantly be going that way. You'll constantly be going this way. And you don't wanna be that person that um, the kayakers have to be like, dude, go that way, okay? So some body balance drills. 
a wonderful thing. Um, it might take you a minute or two to do one length or one lap, but that's okay. Equalizing it out is the important part. And that's where, you know, we have to take a step back from the master swim classes and the go fast, 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 get our body balance right, get our strength work right, get our body more equal, and things just, it's magic. They just kind of come to you a little bit better. Um, strength work in the gym helps you to be more confident too. And that's probably a number one skill of managing the swim. Fast 50s, I give these to my athletes too. They hate them. We're not talking about pace, though they're working on pace. I'm talking about getting the heart rate up and learning how to um, control that. Um, learning a mantra that's going to get you through the tough stuff. So say I'm um, doing fast 50s and she's only giving you that five second rest and you're, and you're just, you can, you can mentally make choices to let yourself get ratcheted up and get angry and get frustrated and da 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 or you can exhale, chill, reset, even every breath you can reset and keep your mind together. Don't give in, don't give up, okay? If you need to slow down a little bit, adjust fire, but you hold your position in the water, your body balance, that position in the water. So that helps you to mentally handle when it's choppy, when you have to um, kind of change up what you're doing when you're swimming. Um, Always stick with your mental strength, your breathing, and your position in the water, and you'll get it done. You will get it done. And if you're swimming straight, when it's choppy like that, it's just so much better because you can manage the swim easier because you're sighting less. When you come up to sight, just all sorts of things. You catch water, um, you lose your rhythm, et cetera, et cetera. It's really choppy. You know, you're just your whole body position changes when you have to sight a lot. Okay, so pool work and gym work can really help with having successful open water swimming. Um, so yoga, good yoga, the yoga that you work and relax at the same time, yoga that you're working on breathing. Oh, something else that you can do in the pool. Sorry. Um, when you're practicing breathing, like some three, five, seven, where you're breathing every three, breathing every five, breathing every seven, that type of stuff, some other drills that you can do will help you to learn how to control your breath. And if you can control your breath, when you get into the open water swimming and it's choppy and you can't breathe normally and you adopt a different breathing pattern, but you've practiced it in the pool, you know that it's okay, and you know that you can adjust a smidge, maybe kick less to accommodate whatever breathing um, pattern that you need, um, and understand from those fast 50s that when you get slightly hypoxic, you can control the chimp brain and say, no, it's okay, I can, I can manage this, maybe I need to slow down a little bit, maybe I need to exhale a little bit, but there's a point where when you're getting slightly hypoxic and kind of upset, there's two avenues. You can kind of go out of control or you can be like, Shh, no, it's okay. I know how to do this. This feeling is okay. This feeling is not doomsday. Um, but if you practice that feeling in the pool, you're familiar with it and you understand it. Okay. So yoga teaches us, you know, equal strength in our body, in our shoulders, in our hips. That's really important. Swim straight. So not only do the shoulders need to be um, equally strong, ideally hips need to be equally strong, and that's just kind of a general thing. Listen to the podcast and the resource on strength training. If you want to be fast and injury-free, the joints need to be centered, plain and simple. Um so if your hips are equally strong and your back is of equal length on both sides, you're not going to swim this way, you're not going to swim that way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yoga can also help you to learn breath control, um, which can help with um, the open water swimming when you need to change your breathing pattern. Something else that um, yoga, you know, if you're doing mindfulness and a little bit of the med meditative thing, um, it helps you have more 
grace and grit at the same time as far as being aware of what's going on, understanding who's who, understanding, hey, this is a chimp brain, understanding, hey, this is a logical brain, understanding, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting upset, I'm getting upset. Yoga is the easiest place to learn how to engage that vagal nerve to develop vagal tone. Um, remember in the the first video, and we'll talk about it more in the second video, that uh, vagal tone, the vagal response, that vagal nerve helps to calm this, this nervous system down, lower the heart rate. Yoga is by far the easiest place to learn how to do that. Um, so if you're one of those type A, the voices don't stop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yoga is a wonderful place to learn how to do that. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but um, it really helps you and it helps you to control your stress response if you know what you're doing. So if you're the person that is, you know, swimming with music a lot to keep your mind distracted and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I challenge you to be a little more yoga-like and turn inward a little bit, learn the terrain on the inside a little bit, help you with the open water swimming. Okay. Managing open water swimming. Um, if you struggle with um, this first part of swimming, and I think a lot of people would benefit from this, run before you swim, be warmed up before you swim, you know, moving your shoulders and doing a little bit of a tap dance and calisthenics two minutes before isn't enough. You need to run like 10, 15 minutes, get the cardiovascular system primed up, ready to roll. Um, and then you're also like before a race or before swimming, when everybody's talking about the dead fish or the, the, whatever they're talking about, you know, the, the catecholamines are just kind of what that's doing is raising the heart rate. Okay. Um, and then when you change orientation and you start swimming, um, this interchange between the heart, the pulmonary system, the lungs, all of that stuff, it changes a little bit when you go horiz uh, horizontal like this. Um, things change a little bit, and we'll talk more about that, and I'll put a link into the swim-induced pulmonary edema. But if you can get the cardiovascular system warmed up and burn through some of the catecholamines, the stress, um, the stress hormones, your experience of the first part of that swim is going to be a lot different than um, if you hadn't ran. I always run before races for the most part if I can. Um, I didn't at Puerto Rico just because logistics wise and I felt pretty chill. Um, and I was taking a, taking a supplement, a um, CBD pill with some um, adrenal support in it too and I was experimenting with that so was, I mindfully didn't run to see what it would do. Um, in a worst case scenario, when you're in a, a race situation that you can't run prior, um, we work magically, but running is, is really good practice to do right before you run. So, you know, that entails not wearing flip flops. That means, you know, wearing a pair of running shoes and transitioning and handing that to your people, but it works really great. And then understanding that, and in part two, talk about this, this exhale thing, when you're upset, get into the habit of no matter what you're doing, always exhale. <sighs> always exhale. Engages that vagal nerve, calms the heart rate down, gets, just will help you to get more oxygen, more um, CO2 out. It's just a really good thing to do. Helps your brain be, oh, okay, better. I'm not starving. Okay. Open water swimming. <laughs> So if early in the season, if you have a race early in the season and it's April and you're starting to look at the water temperature and it says like it's 54, it's time to start thinking that you're going to go out, especially if you have an early race like in June. Um, under 50, uh -uh. 50 is pretty cold. So right now 55 is the water temperature here at a place that we go to. It's time to start getting out. Wetsuit, obviously. Um, you don't have to have a sleeved wetsuit to manage that cold of water. I have never raced in a sleeved wetsuit. Um, I do have arm warmers that are the neoprene. Um, so you can do it sleeveless. Your hands and arms are going to be cold. 
but the main area to that you're concerned about is is your trunk okay so you don't have to have a sleeved wetsuit if you have like large breasts or um, you just can't handle stuff around your neck or you know you can't find a wetsuit a, a sleeveless wetsuit is a, is a good option um, my personal favorite on this topic of wetsuit is the DeSoto two-piece it takes all of this away the top is of a thinner material than the bottom um, is beautiful it's beautiful the DeSoto two-piece beautiful wonderful it's a little bit expensive but well worth the investment because um, I've experienced races without it and with it and just the tug on the neck I mean it's like someone choking you <laughs> so with everything else going on no fins no gills no flippers it's cold you're not at the top of the food chain Darwin's screaming at you and then you have something tight around your neck and seriously this is where the grace comes in of you're asking a lot of yourself to be able to do, just get in the water and just keep up with everybody and go really fast <laughs> it's a lot to ask okay um so have a properly fitted wetsuit is the best idea here everybody's different that's the problem and then um, don't be afraid to spray. I use Triglide. It's the best thing in the whole wide world in wetsuits. Spray it on. It's like Pam, but better. Butter. Better. It's lovely. Um, I don't like the stick roll on. Ha getting your wetsuit on correctly is super important. Getting enough stuff over here. One of the biggest tips that I tell people is get wetsuit material in your crotch. Pull it up high enough that you've got stuff there. And you're pulling it up, pulling it up. Um, don't be in a hurry to get your wetsuit on. Get it on right so it's not pulling on your neck. Um, the first time that you're going to go out and do open water swimming, have so much grace for yourself. And never, 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 never swim alone. Even with one of those wave buoy thingies. I don't understand. I just don't. I just don't. It's a rule that I have. Um, I do not swim after we've been drinking. And I don't swim alone, period. Absolutely, period. Um, it's just not worth it. Things go sideways, and that is not a risk that we should be willing to take. Ideally, if, and especially if you're a new person um, to open water swimming and you're swimming when it's cold, um, have someone doing kayak support that is staying close to people. Um, there's not a lot of benefit to having kayak support if they can't get to you really quick. And there's no benefit to being watched from the shore. What are they going to do? No word. Yeah, what are they going to do? So don't swim by yourself. It's, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Um, figure that out. Now, if there's a place that you can go that you can mostly touch or there's a buoy line um, and maybe swim in a pair, be cognizant of each other where you're at. We did that at Puerto Rico, Derek and I. We found a swim beach. We stayed on the inside of the buoys and we swam buoy to buoy to buoy. Um, we couldn't touch there, but we were in the swim area. There was lifeguards, not that they were paying much attention, but we were paying attention to each other and seasoned swimmers so we took that risk we were together um but generally the smarter move would have been to have one of those wave buoys trailing behind you because if you know if you get a cramp because your magnesium's off and whatever anyway don't swim by yourself swim with a buoy be smart don't make silly decisions because um you're short on time or whatever so when you're going out first time open water swimming and you're learning how to deal with the cold, be super graceful with yourself and only set up the expectation that maybe you're going to swim a 500. You're just going to get your face in the water. Um, the keys behind doing this well are that you get your wetsuit on. Hopefully you're warmed up and you have um, ran before warmed up. Um, and then just a lot of mental grit, grace, sense of humor, and a big dash of I got this okay 
Um, when you get into the water, if it's super, super cold, you can wear your booties. You can wear two swim caps. Um, they make neoprene caps. You can wear arm warmers, whatever. Um, thinking about doing Ironman Arizona next year. It's a cold swim. You can wear booties. Um, get in the water. Don't be freaking out. Don't be, oh, it was so cold. Just get in the water, mentally set yourself up. Yeah, it's gonna be cold and you're gonna do your business. And the first thing you have to do is let the water into your wetsuit, which is a shock, shock, huge shock. You don't wanna do it. So you gotta get your armpits down, get your, get it in there. Um, and I spend, I don't know, maybe a minute like that. Let your body warm up the water. That's gonna keep you warm. Okay. And then what I do, I don't do this anymore, but what I did in the beginning was I would breaststroke for a while. So, um, and breaststroking, my face was forward. I get my face in the water and the um, culture shock, the shock of having your face in the cold, cold, cold water is difficult and it takes your breath away. Um, so I would breaststroke for like 10, 15 breaststrokes. And I, and this is where the, that, big dash of handle your business comes in 10 15 breaststrokes and then freestyle go go get yourself calmed down you'll have a way better chance of calming down if you have ran before you swam done some of this other stuff it's gonna be cold and you know just set up the expectation that you're gonna swim maybe 10 15 minutes Okay, get out, done, perfect, awesome. Now you've done what 1%, 2% of the population can do. Win, huge win. Then, you know, the next time you go out, do it again. Um, kind of lengthen the expectation. One thing that I suggest that people don't do unless absolutely needed is swim on your back. You can breaststroke, you can doggy paddle, I like to keep my eyes forward. Always know what's right in front of me. Whenever you flip over on your back and trying to calm down, waves can go over your face. People can swim over you. You're in a pos not in a position of power. You're in a position of surrender. Your body doesn't like that. Psychologically, I don't think that's good for you either. The yoga world would say fear is back. Eyes forward is power and strength. So I tell people breaststroke, doggy paddle, side paddle, keep moving. If you find yourself trying to breaststroke or freestyle and you just can't get your breathing under control, freestyle for 10 strokes. We pause for a station identification. No, really, we paused so BK could charge your phone. <laughs> um, so do the um, 10 freestyle, 10 breaststroke, keeping your face in the water if possible until you learn how to control the heart rate, calm it down, learn that the cold water is not gonna kill you. Learn that you can control this. Um, it is a skill, it's a big skill. Um, just have, have grace with yourself that, you know, maybe one time, maybe two times, three times, that's what it takes. Um, and always remember, it's not natural and it's not what you were built to. You don't have gills, you don't have fins. You don't have scales, you don't have hair, you don't have feathers, you're not a goose, you're not a fish, you're not a dolphin, you don't have epic amounts of fat to keep you warm like a whale. You know what I'm talking about? So anyway, um, just, just be really mindful when you're going in, going out the first couple of times. Um, and again, I can't emphasize it so much. Please run before you swim. It will help you exponentially. Um, it could mean that the difference, five, ten minutes can mean the difference between just a fine cold swim and an epic, oh my gosh, the kayak is hauling you back in because, you know, maybe you had a sort of an asthma attack or whatever got out of control. Um, Swim-induced pulmonary edema is a real deal. And a lot of the times it's getting misdiagnosed as asthma. That happened to me specifically um, with, with, 
medical support at an Iron Man race using a stethoscope to listen to me through my wetsuit. Okay. You are in charge of your own health here now. So swim induced pulmonary edema. There's a, uh, a link. I'll put a link to it. We've done a lot of podcasting on it just in a nutshell. Um, it's where the tiny capillaries in the lungs break a little bit because, um, of stress because you're trying to pump too much volume or too hard through heart rate is up higher you've overhydrated because you're kind of freaking out a little bit overhydrating changes the um, tank volume and so you're trying to push more water through the hoses um, catecholamines stress hormones make things pump harder um, the compression on the chest makes things pump harder um, prior into the series, I was talking about your upright things change physiologically when you go horizontal regarding this tank. Okay, so the swim induced pulmonary edema sounds like um, asthma, it's crackling in the chest, you have water in your lungs at that point. Um, it's not all that uncommon, it gets made, misdiagnosed as um, asthma, I think, a lot. So just be mindful that. There's a lot of things going on. You need to kind of address all these different things when you want to do this cold open water swimming. Do not approach cold open water swimming like, oh, I got this. I've been running for 15, 20 years. I got it. It's good. Don't do that. Um, swimming is it's challenging. And there's a lot of things going on that you need to give grace to with a big dash of grit. Okay. Um, so we talked a lot about that. Oh, the wonderful thing about this swim induced pulmonary edema, not the wonderful thing about it, but there's a, a nice fix for it and it's caffeine, okay? Hot, hot coffee will do it. Um, a hot energy drink would probably do it too. Um, the warm helps. Um, and then caffeine, a uh, vasodilator, I hope I got that right. It calms things back down and so you'll stop coughing. So that coughing, um, that you experience after doing a swim like this. Um, it doesn't have to be pink and throthy, meaning blood, um, for you to have like a touch of pulmonary edema. Um, just kind of coughing like that, it really kind of sounds like asthma at this point. Um, it's, it's just you're not doing the oxygen exchange right, you're trying to cough up the fluid that's in your lungs. So just be mindful of that. Um, that there are things that you need to do. Take in precaution. Run before you swim. Don't overhydrate. Um, know who you are. If your heart rate gets super high, if you have anxiety, if you have adrenal issues, just do the things that you're supposed to be doing to manage and set yourself up for the best swim ever, best swim picture ever. So anyway, um, I think that's all I wanted to say about the open water swimming. Just be super duper mindful of it. Don't swim by yourself. Um, put your wetsuit on right. It's going to be cold. Have grace with yourself. Um, and, you know, a good amount of mental grit, grace and grit. Um, and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Um, race experience as well. You know, when you're first getting into triathlon and doing the open water swimming, if you, you know, are crazy like me and decided you're going to do an Ironman the first season out, do a bunch of sprint races that don't take a lot of taxing on the body. Just be careful about everybody else around you, but get swim experience. Do the races that you can get swim experience on, even if it's super short. Um, that swim experience, just getting in the water, getting your heart rate c controlled, um, getting going, it's a wonderful experience. Practice your routine of what it would take for you to be super chill and ready to roll um, and have command of that swim instead of having the mentality of just surviving the swim. Um, it's so much more pleasurable and you gain so much by learning how to be calm, cool, collected, and mostly badass swimming and open water swimming. Anyway. Um, so Coach BK, let me know if you have any questions. Email me, uh, message me. Glad to help you guys out on this stuff. Um, 
it's near and dear to my heart. It's a place to practice wonderful things that um, affect your life. And um, just leave a tidbit here. Um, let's see, what year was it? 16. So my middle son that um, almost drowned in a pool, he was really afraid of the water. And so over the years, watching me <laughs> go out and do some of these really hard things, we took the kids out to do a swim at, at a lake that was really choppy. Um, in the water, we left the kids. Um, they were old enough to be left at the at the swim area, and we were just kind of swimming back and forth to the swim buoy, um, to that buoy line and back, and it was so choppy. I'm like, what are we doing? We're gonna kill her. It's choppy. But we were just doing kind of quick out and back just to learn how to get through the chop waves. Um, I think it was that day, that moment watching him and he finally got courage enough to play in the water, play in the chop. And since then, um, through my experience, I think he gained the bravery to get over his, um, his water experience and now he's not afraid of the water anymore. So, um, throw that there at you. Um, you don't really know who's watching you, so do the hard work. If it's set in front of you, don't don't be be brave and do it. It can be difficult, but um, this series is meant to give you all the tools that you need to to um, tackle whatever obstacle you have in front of you. Hope you're having a great day. Namaste.